So hello guys and welcome back to the channel. You're probably wondering what I'm doing today, seeing as I'm sat down in a nice comfy chair on the canal bank, um, and that is I'm doing some lovely waggler fishing. Now it's where a lot of us start out as anglers, I know what, nowadays a lot more people start out predator fishing, but I'm starting out with a waggler today and it's, it's how I started off fishing when I was younger. And it's a brilliant way to fish. When you start off waggler fishing, you're generally going to get smaller fish, because most people go to the local tackle store, they'll fish with maggots, they generally fish quite shallow, people often don't plummet when they first start fishing, um, but when you start refining things down you can go from catching lots of small fish to some real real nice ones and that's what I'm going to show you today is how you can go from catching a smaller fish on your waggler as a beginner um, to catching some much bigger specimen fish changing your tactics, your baits um, and how you're doing to target some slightly bigger fish and that's what we're doing today on the local canal uh, so fishing my standard float fishing rod that I use for from trotting on my river to fishing for bream and stuff on the canal which is what I'm doing today it's a Shakespeare Super Team 11 foot float rod, you've seen it before, matched up with the Mitchell Advocate uh, Match as a T, um, links to those will be in the description below. So brand new luggage with me today, uh, Shakespeare bought a brand new range of SKP luggage. So I've got the bag and the lightweight chair, and the good thing about the lightweight chair is it can actually clip onto the rucksack. Um, I'll leave links to these in the description too, um, just by a little link on the back of the bag, which means if you're traveling long distances, if you're walking a lot, if you want to move spots, clip it to the bag, away you go, um, and then you can sit down and start fishing comfortably. So I'm moving spot today, I found this, um, I've known this area before, I've fished it for years, basically all my life. I know the fish are here, I've got polarized glasses on, just to help me make sure I know where the fish are, because they're always moving about. I straight away saw some bream in this area, in this rough area anyway. Um, but the main bait I'm using today, you can't get much cheaper. You can't really get cheaper than this. Smart price bread. This has been liquidized. What that means is it's been put into a blender, blended up really fine. If you use fresh bed bread, you don't need to add any water. So like mine today, you don't need to add any water to this. I can squeeze it into a bowl, throw it in, and it will actually break up on the way down, creating a cloud of bait all the way down to the bottom, which attracts bream and other species straight to that area. So when you think about it, people feed ducks all the time chucking in slices of bread and if you watch your ducks carefully as they're ripping the bread apart all the crumbs fall down through the water column and those fish are seeing that every day day in day out through winter and summer when people are feeding the ducks probably the number one bait especially for bream bream absolutely love it tench as well i've got some really really good sized tench in fact my personal best tench has come to bread before on bread in bread so that brings us to the hook bait hook bait choice obviously for fishing bread crumb as a feed bread flake so I've got, I don't know, three or four slices of bread here. All together, I've probably got about 30 peas worth of bread. You get your bread, mould it around the shank of the hook. It's perfect. You'll see that as I'm fishing today, how I'm using doing that. But you can also throw some balls into the swim as well to help feed. So today, it's really cheap. It's really simple. I haven't had to buy any maggots. Loaf of bread costs me cheaper than maggots. So you're probably going to be wondering what the rig looks like for these bigger fish. Well, it's not that much different to your standard float fishing rig, really. I'm fishing a small crystal waggler because I'm only fishing the canal. It's only four foot deep at the very deepest. I'm fishing about four foot deep today, three and a half foot deep. Um, and then what I'm doing is I've got the shot either side of my float holding the float in place. And then I've got three droppers right down towards the bottom end of the rig just to help it sink down. But these are just spaced out towards the end of the rig, which means it gets through the top layers quite quick away from the smaller fish and then settles really gently down on the bottom. So I'm molding that around the hook. You may be wondering how deep I'm fishing. Well, you probably guessed it already. I'm fishing on the bottom, fishing on the deck. A lot of people when they start out fish at any depth. They don't really know. They might not even fish uh, a plummet. Plummet is a piece of kit which looks like this. It's a lead weight with some cork in the bottom. What you do is you th thread the hook through the eye, put the nib of the hook into the cork on the bottom, and then you can use that to measure your depth. So you'll measure the depth. I've measured the depth. And I've got it about maybe four to five inches over depth. I want it a little bit over depth because the canal has a little bit of toe to it. And what I don't want is my rig to be dragging along the bottom. If I've only got it an inch over depth, it'll drag a little bit too much. If I've got it under depth, if I've got it above the water, it'll float around too much. And I probably don't get as many takes from the bream that are bottom feeders. Um, so having it four or five inches over depth, the toe can pull it a little bit. It'll tighten up and I've still got lots of tension when the fish pick up, picks up the bait and pulls the float under. I've already had some action so far today. So I know that my rig's working. It's a rig I've used a million times before. Fingers crossed we can get some more fish on it. There we go, fish on, fish on. Oh, it's a nice rope. 
a lovely roach to start off the session anyway. It's not breaking any PBs or world records, but lovely fish and he absolutely nailed the bait. It's not exactly what it was after, it was after Big Bream today, but it's a beautiful roach and I'll take it any day. I'm we'll slipping straight back, we're not putting him in the keep next, if I get any bream, he might get squished. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Straight back out there. Small little bread flake, big enough to mould around the sides of the hook and a bit sticking out the top. Slow it down a little bit before. Fish on, nice bream. Just what we were after. Make sure we land this one because we lost the first one we hooked, didn't we? It's a nice fish. Proper solid bream. Oh, I just got him in the net before I got tangled up in a tree. <laughs> awesome. And one of the best methods to catch him, and there we go. Hook really nicely placed. Right in the top lip. And there we have it. Beautiful male bream. Full of spawning tubercles. They'll be spawning in a couple of months' time, not just yet, not anytime soon, but beautiful fish. We'll stick him in the keep net. Good net builder. And a good start on the big species anyway. I've been fishing about half an hour now. I oh, lost one bream, had a small roach, and another lovely bream actually graced the net this time. Right, let's see if we can get any more. Definitely some bream over there. I've just seen some bream swimming past really shallow. I need to get some bait out of there quickly to try and catch your attention. There we go. Just seen some bream just kiting along the far bank. Quite quickly they come from to the left at me, so they're either coming up here to feed or someone's just spooked them from the left. There's definitely maybe four or five good sized bream swimming along the far bank. So I was very quickly getting some liquidized bread out there. If we break up through the water in my swim and catch their attention and hopefully draw them over to my area. Fingers crossed I'm going to get a take in a minute. There we go. That was quick. Fish on. And it's a good bream. Perfect timing. That must have been seconds. Just seconds after I mentioned there was some bream swimming past and I wanted to grab their attention by putting some liquidized bread out there. Absolutely perfect timing. This one's kiting quite nicely. Watch out because there's a tree above me. I keep getting caught in. Should have picked me swimming a little bit better, but obviously there's fish down there. Another beautiful fish enters the net. And another one to put inside the keep net. And then you've got to be courteous when you're fishing. If your pole's in the way, make sure you move it out of the way. You don't want to be obstructing somebody. And there we have it. Another beautiful slab. A bit smaller than the last one. This one's definitely a female. Really, really nice fish, really clean fish, and perfect timing. As soon as I saw some carton along the back, put a bit of liquidized bread out there, caught their attention, came straight over to the swim, float went under, fish in the net, awesome. There we go, fish on, fish on, fish on, another big group. Popping off now, this is what, not even, probably just over five minutes after I got the last one. Just about got him. Oh, we got him. Another beautiful bream, I'm struggling to get my hands around this one. This is a proper bream, the right chunk. Hooked nicely right in the corner, every one of them have. There we go, beautiful fish. This one's probably getting off a four pound. It's got some right weight to it. Really nice fish, a bit better than the other ones. All on bread still. The session so far probably cost me less than 30p. I've only used half a loaf of smart price bread. Cracking bit of fishing so far. I could probably get maybe a couple more fish out before light levels get too low. So hopefully I've picked up a few tips along the way this session. 
and uh, let's post one the net and hopefully we can get some more fish out. Definitely had some movement there. Yep, 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 we're in, we're in. Another nice bream. He's a real nice one. I think that might be the biggest one so far. You almost tried to rock it off with it at first. I think you ain't doing that because you're a bream. <laughs> Soon changed his mind. <laughs> I had a suspicion it might have ended up being a, a tinge for a split second when I first hooked it. Yep, definitely the smallest one so far, but he felt like the biggest at first. Keep up a right scrap. He rocketed straight over to the back. I thought it was going to be a tench. Nicely hooked, like all the mapping. We're getting slime when we brand new bags, so I'll be careful there. Let's get it down on the keep net. Absolutely beautiful bream. Proper slimy buggers. Really slammed me up. <laughs> we got to take care of them like you do any other fish. Absolutely beautiful. Great fun on the float gear too. Right, let's get these fish rested in the water. Then we'll release them. Beautiful. So that's it, the end of our session. Caught some fantastic bream, four great big lovely slabs out of the local canal, as well as a few roach as well. Fished for approximately three hours, so it's a really good bit of fishing. I did also bump a couple of bream as well, so it could have been an even better day. Plus I ended up talking to everyone on the bank. I always do when I'm fishing, I can't help it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you've been able to take away a few tips uh, from this session, if there's anyone out there who's wanting to do some general course fishing on the, their local canal, and was hoping for some, maybe some new ideas on how to get some of the larger fish, like the bream, how to pick them out. Well, the key is bread. Sweet corn also works really well. If you want to fish a feeder, um, you can also use sweet corn. That works really well. It's picking out some of the bigger bream. Can't talk now. Um, so if you want to check out any of the stuff I've used, any of the luggage that I've used today, or the rod and reel, all my gear that I've used, I'm going to leave it in the link uh, in the description below, so you can check that out too. If you want to subscribe, feel free. The channel's going really, really rubbish at the minute. For some reason, YouTube isn't pushing the content anymore. Um, but if you feel like subscribing, please do. It helps me out. And I'll catch you guys later.